the U.S. Air Force has announced that it has conducted its first successful open test of a palletized, airdropped munition known as Rapid Dragon, an MC-130J special purpose transport aircraft fired a combat cruise missile using a prototype of the new system, which subsequently struck its target floating in the Gulf of Mexico. This test demonstrates that the arms race continues to advance and that the United States is working on new technologies. So what makes this new development so attractive? This bomb's main achievement is its four-pack deployment system, consisting of the projectile itself, plus three mass simulators that are fired in succession from the box. Safe separation from the box is achieved using a non-standard nose-down release method. Immediately after the vertical release, the projectile deploys its wings and tail assembly, establishes aerodynamic control, starts its engine, performs an active pull-up maneuver, and heads towards the target. Perhaps the most interesting element of palletized rapid deployment is the implications it has for the future of airspace. Such a projectile drop system will saturate the U.S. military with numerous new weapon options, while also making it more difficult for the enemy to hone in on their target. During trials, the pallet can be seen falling from the aircraft along with the warhead, with all four parts separating in mid-air. One is the actual missile, while the other three serve as decoys. This increases the number of targets that enemy air defense systems must track and neutralize, thereby depleting their ammunition reserves faster. In addition, the U.S. military could use palletized munitions to assist in restricting traffic along sea lanes and harbors. Ships have always been a nuisance with their powerful defense systems, like the Phalanx CIWS on board. The fact that the test was successful means that the bomb was able to overcome such a difficult obstacle. How do palletized munitions work? It's very simple. Using a specially designed deployment box, the weapon is launched from the airdrop platform of a standard cargo plane. The system has been made mobile enough to be able to be rolled on and rolled off, ensuring a quick deployment and eliminating the need for modifications. Efforts are underway to use multiple pallet platforms. The two main configurations are a six-pack, based on the C-130 aircraft, and a nine-pack, based on the C-17. The goal is to further improve these transport vessels to provide more options with additional weapons systems. With this system, the projectile is locked into the launch mechanism, after which it is loaded into the aircraft. Once a target has been acquired and a strike request is made, attack coordinates are either confirmed or updated. It is worth noting that during testing, the bomb's target was set after launch. This means that the projectile can be controlled during flight regardless of the type of aircraft it was dropped from. No other country has this technology. The only thing we don't know about this U.S. innovation is the kind of warhead it contains. Based on available information, analysts suggest that it is similar to the GBU-12 Paveway, which is also equipped with an advanced guidance and control system. The GBU-12 Aerial Guided Bomb features an 1,100-pound warhead and a nose-mounted laser seeker. It has two generations, the Paveway-1 with fixed wings and the Paveway-2 with retractable wings. A high-explosive MK-82 serves as a warhead. The GBU-12 is designed for specific aircraft such as the F-22, the A-6, and the F-35, and primarily targets stationary armored vehicles. This makes the Rapid Dragon immediately technologically superior, given that it was used against a moving naval target. It can even be said that a more similar equivalent to this bomb is the Russian KAB-500. Unlike the GBU-12, the primary KAB model doesn't rely on satellite navigation. Instead, it analyzes the surrounding terrain using its television seeker, a method also employed by the latest U.S. development. This projectile has a number of notable features. With today's jamming countermeasure tools, GPS is unlikely to be effective, so inventors have had to come up with ways to circumvent these limitations. Instead of using the target itself for homing, the KAB-500 seeker uses landmarks on the ground to determine the exact coordinates and lock onto a target that doesn't even stand out from the landscape. The disadvantage of a television guidance seeker is its dependence on weather conditions. The KAB-500 can also hit moving targets. If the Russian military adopts palletized airdropped bomb technology, then it is likely that they will be able to create their own version of the Rapid Dragon bomb. The U.S. should consider being more secretive about disclosing its new technologies. Thanks to the diligent work of journalists, we already know that Rapid Dragon has already passed four phases of trials. Phase 1 successfully demonstrated the weapon's feasibility and capability on the C-130 and C-17 and studied the combined behavior of air-to-surface missiles and the pelletized configuration. 
Phase 2 developed fire control and mission planning with flight tests to explore targeting and retargeting. Phase 3 explored and validated deployment system designs and stability through simulation, ground launch testing, and analysis. Phase 4 is currently underway and has demonstrated high altitude drop, deconfliction of operationally relevant payloads, and is working toward powered flight tests. Perhaps the most important outcome of testing was the ability to ensure the redistribution of Air Force resources since these weapon systems can quickly supplement the armament of any bomber or even a conventional cargo aircraft, thereby freeing up strike aircraft for other important missions in the conflict zone. No specialized mechanisms are needed for this bomb, just a large cargo compartment is enough. For example, the C-130 Hercules entered service back in 1954, but it has been chosen as the primary option for these modern munitions. Of course, this old man has seen many changes in his day. About 60 variants of the aircraft have been created in total, but the Air Force finally settled on the MC-130J. The impressive MC-130J is based on the C-130J Super Hercules military transport and differs from the latter by the greater load-bearing capacity of its special wing structure. Additionally, this aircraft is equipped with more powerful electric generators and a more advanced loading and unloading system. This feature played a key role in its selection as the carrier of the Rapid Dragon. The aircraft is also equipped with electro-optical and infrared sensors to help track targets and warn of approaching threats. This giant can also be used as a tanker for other aircraft. The aircraft is capable of speeds up to 415 miles per hour and has a flight range of more than 3,000 miles. That's enough to transport its cargo from the airbase to the target location. However, the craft's most important feature is its luggage compartment. The carrying capacity of this transporter is about 35 tons. Of course, the MC-130 isn't the only plane that can be used to deliver bombs. The Boeing C-17, capable of fitting up to nine Rapid Dragon munitions, was chosen as a viable second option. This aircraft also belongs to the carrier class of aircraft and is in service with the Air Forces of the United States, Australia, Qatar, Canada, Great Britain, India, and Kuwait. It was designed to transport personnel and drop cargo, and now it has been given a new opportunity to see combat. Among its interesting features are the 90-foot panels used in the wing skin, the largest aluminum aircraft components of those days. The cargo compartment was designed to accommodate an M1 Abrams tank, infantry combat vehicles, 45-ton trucks, SUVs, a self-propelled 155mm artillery mount, three AN-64 Apache helicopters, and up to 18 cargo containers. Not surprisingly, this plane was a no-brainer for the developers of this new bomb. In addition, 54 collapsible seats for transporting soldiers were installed on the aircraft, with up to 48 additional seats stored on board. The Boeing C-17 has an armored undercarriage that provides protection against small arms fire. The aircraft is designed for deploying cargo using parachute devices from extremely low altitudes or landing up to 102 paratroopers. As a result, this big fella can carry troops or launch helicopters. Now, thanks to this new weapon innovation, the plane has the opportunity to drop shells on the enemy's head once again. It has turned out to be quite the versatile soldier. We will surely see more trials of this weapon system on other aircraft in the near future, and given the American designer's enthusiasm, a smaller version of the bomb for smaller aircraft may even be released. And with that, our video has come to an end. If you liked it, please leave a like and a comment to let us know what other topics you'd love us to cover on this channel. Thanks for watching, and see you soon!